the buttons by, by numbers, uh, given one of these gadgets, you can interpret any natural number uh, written in, in base P uh, as a sequence of instructions. So this number you're going to read as uh, press the button phi sub n r, then press the button phi, uh, sorry, phi sub n r minus 1, and so on. Right? And, and when, you're, when you're done reading the instructions, it's going to print and, and see what you did. So, um, here are two examples of, of uh, sequences that, uh, that arise from, from some of these things. Um, so the, the bound suit sequence, uh, I can define it without talking about uh, finer uh, automata. Uh, the, the nth element of the sequence is going to be 1 if every block of zeros appearing in the duotic expansion of n has even length. Uh, otherwise, uh, the end term of the sequence is uh, zero. There's this other sequence uh, where, so I'm going to you know by Bn, the number of pairs of consecutive ones in the binary expansion of, of n. Uh, and then however many pairs of ones uh, you have, I'm going to raise negative one to that number. Uh, so, so by pairs of ones, I mean uh, they can overlap, right? So, uh, in the in the binary number one one one, there are two pairs of ones, second uh, and, and the first, and they share that middle one. Okay. Uh, so, it turns out that these sequences arise from uh, these these two examples. This one corresponds to the long suite. And this one corresponds to the uh, root initial period. Uh, so I, I think it's actually quite fun to, to figure out why, why these machines give rise to those sequences. So let's just go through it for a moment. Uh, so for this sequence, uh, I'm going to start at this state and, and then press the buttons in the binary expansion of, of n. Uh, so you know you, you, you start from the uh, you know, from the coefficient of the highest power of two, uh, so it's going to be a one. But then at some point you might run into zeros. Right? The first zero that you see is going to change the output, uh, and that output, uh, you know, if you have a, a zero next to that, it's going to change again. So so you see that the first block of zeros that you run into. Uh, if that is an even number of zeros, they're going to end up back here, and then press a one for some amount of time and, and, and stay in this output. But if you had an odd number of zeros, the very first block of zeros is odd, you will be here when you hit the next one. And, and there's no getting out of that. So that's definitely the sequence for this. Uh, for this other one, uh, right? this is kind of, this, the, the output of this depends on the parity of the number of pairs of ones. Uh, so here's what happens if you, if the last button that you pressed was a one, uh, that was the last button. If the next button is also a one, you have just added one more pair of ones. Okay. Uh, and the only the only two states that uh, come from having pressed one are these two. And you see that if you're at any of the states where you have just pressed a one and you press one again, you flip the output. Uh, but if you're at any of these places and you, uh, okay, so, so right, so adding adding a pair of ones uh, flips, and if the last thing that you press was zero, then uh, you're either here or here, and uh, if you press one now from any of those places, you don't change the output yet, because I didn't add a pair of ones, you would have to press one again. Okay. So, anyway, I just think these things are pretty fun. Um, so, in, in combinatorics, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of usual game that people play. You have 
some kind of sequence that arose from something you're looking at, and then you write down its uh, generating series versus its formal power series, where you put the elements of your sequence uh, into the coefficients of, of x. And, uh, and then you start asking questions about what kind of power series is this? Is it, uh, is it a rational function of x secretly, or is it algebraic or definite? Um, and often when you are able to answer that kind of question, that gives you information back about your sequence. For example, like how quickly it grows or something like that. Um, so it turns out that the generating uh, functions for these two sequences are hypertranscendental. And that was first proved by uh, Thomas Dreyfus, Charles Caruan, and uh, Julian Rock uh, just last year. Um, so the, uh, the work that I'll talk about today with, uh, with, with Michael, uh, uh, we're trying to develop similar tools to the ones that they use to prove this kind of result. Uh, and here's how you go about proving something like that. Um, so as Michael mentioned in his talk, uh, the, the, you, you can associate to one of these uh, field chromatic sequences uh, a kind of Mahler equation that's satisfied by the generating function. Uh, so, that, so that places the sequences that you care about in combinatorics in the context of, of these Gala theories uh, that talk about such equations. So uh, I'm going to talk about two different but related Gala theories today. Uh, the first one, just briefly, I'll get into uh, more details of what the theory is about in a moment. Uh, but the series are going to associate uh, uh, this geometric object to the equation that you're looking at, uh, the Gala group. And, and the Gala group is kind of keeping track of or encoding uh, the relations among your solutions. How independent are they or what kind of relations hold among them. Uh, in particular, if, the, if you have a very large Gala group, then that means that there are very few relations among the solutions. Uh, and that happens in, in both theories. So the, the first Gala theory uh, only gets to see algebraic relations, but then there's a differential Gala theory uh, that's going to uh, encode the differential algebraic relations among the solutions. Uh, so to prove that earlier fact about uh, the hypertranscendence of the generating functions associated to the sequences, uh, it's, it's, it's enough to show that the differential Gala group is large enough and that's going to force them to be hypertranscendent. Uh, so what, uh, what all of these results are, the, the, the flavor of uh, the results of uh, uh, Thomas, Charlotte, and, and Julian, and ours as well, uh, is that in, in many situations, if you can show that the uh, algebraic non-differential value group is large, uh, large enough, uh, then the differential Gala group will also be large. Um, I should warn you that uh, the word large here means two different things in, in each clause, but I'll get to what, what I mean precisely by that. Um, and this is a, it's a weird result to have because uh, a priori, uh, algebraic relations are special cases of differential relations where the derivatives just don't come up. Uh, so it's, it's, it's obvious that if you already understand all the differential algebraic relations, then these are just containing those. But what this result allows you to go back. You can do very little work to find out a lot of information that you don't have a right to have. Uh, well, you didn't. You know, you didn't. Uh, okay, so I don't want to assume that everyone's very familiar with this color theory, so let me briefly summarize what they say. Um, the, the abstract setup is you have you have a base field of, of uh, everything's characteristic, characteristic zero, um, and your field is equipped with uh, with an automorphism sigma, uh, and to to be able to be a bit more naive in my description of the theory, let me assume also that the the, the field of sigma invariance is uh, algebraically closed. You're given a linear system of uh, sigma equations, uh, and 
to that, this theory associates uh, so-called sigma Picard-Bessy ring, uh, which is the analog in this other theory of uh, the splitting field in classical Kahal theory. Uh, this is a ring that has as many solutions as you could hope to have for the system, and uh, it's minimal for, for that property. Like, like more of it, that's what the professor ring is. Um, then given this ring, you can associate to it its group of um, automorphisms as, as a scale algebra. Uh, but oh, you only want the automorphisms that, uh, that respect the different structure. Right? So these are the automorphisms where any element in R, if it satisfies some kind of signal relation, then given that, that, that element an automorphism takes to another solution of that, of that relation. Um, so, so this is how come the Gal group captures all the other bright information about solutions to this. Uh, so this is at first abstractly just a group of automorphisms, but then uh, if I if I give you uh, if I choose a fundamental matrix of uh, solutions, then that choice identifies the Gal group with a subgroup of GLN uh, reconstitutes. And, and you can show that, in fact, uh, this isn't just a subgroup of JLN, but it's, but it's defined by a system of polynomial equations, right? It's a linear algebraic group. Um, so a lot is known about linear algebraic groups. And now, using this theory, you can, uh, you can use all this machinery about uh, algebraic groups to deduce things about uh, different situations that you don't quite understand. Uh, so let me give you a few. Uh, standard examples of different fields that people look at. Uh, one is, uh, I take as my field, uh, uh, K, the field of rational functions, and sigma is just going to replace x with x plus 1 uh, sillinearly. Okay. So the argument of every rational function is replaced by this. Um, you can also look at uh, the, the, the Q, uh, the Two different situations where what, what sigma does to x instead of uh, shifting it is multiplying it by q, uh, and and then uh, the uh, the sigma structures that come up with Michael Stock uh, are where the automorphism is given by replacing x with x to the p for some integer p, uh, but because I started out saying that I want sigma to be an automorphism, uh, I have to I have to throw in all the fractional powers of x to make sure that, that everything has a pre uh, But in, in, in practice, you work over a larger field, and then you're still somehow able to say things about rational functions again. Uh, it's a bit technical, but it's not a real restriction. Uh, so like I mentioned before, the, the, uh, the bound suite and the Rudin Shapiro differences <coughs> uh, happen to satisfy linear different systems uh, with respect to the Mahler operator for p is equal to 2 over, over the rational functions. So, so, so now this kind of theory and all this machinery uh, allows you to say things about these generating functions. Uh, so the, the differential Galois theory for different equations uh, works uh, similarly. Um, my Bayesian now is going to be equipped not just with uh, orthomorphism but also with the derivation uh, that commutes with, with my sigma. Um, and now, uh, again, for the purposes of being naive, I'm going to assume that the, uh, that the field of sigma invariance is differentially closed. Uh, that essentially allows the, uh, the, 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 the Gallo group, as defined, to have enough points. In principle, you should maybe do something with uh, group functors, but uh, let's just assume that you have a field like that. Um, then if you give me a, a linear different system over this field, I can associate to it a sigma delta p uh, So it's still going to be generated by a fundamental set of solutions. Uh, but, but now we have to throw in all the derivatives of those solutions. Uh, and, and, and again, this sigma delta p ring is uh, minimal for the property of uh, <coughs> having a full set of solutions to the system together with all their derivatives. Uh, 
And as before, once you have this uh, analog of the splitting field, you you attach to it this this group of homomorphisms. Where now uh, you ask not just that they respect algebra and the sigma structure, but you also want the homomorphism to respect any differential relations that might occur among the solutions. Uh, and so this abstract group, uh, once you choose uh, a fundamental matrix of solutions, it gets identified again by, a, by the same construction with a subgroup of GLN over the constants. Uh, but it's not going to be an algebraic group anymore. Now it's going to be a so-called linear differential algebraic group, uh, which I'll get to the definition of that in a moment. But it's a subgroup of GLN that's defined by a system of differential algebraic equations. Uh, on the matrix entries. Uh, so, so here are two different Dallas theories talking about the same kind of thing. You might wonder how they're related. Uh, and the answer is long, but here's something I can say quickly that will come up. Um, inside of this very large Picard-Besser ring, where I not only have uh, the solutions to the system, but all of the derivatives, you can look at the smaller <coughs> case of algebra that is only generated by the solution of the break. So this object is going to satisfy all the properties of a sigma picarvesser ring, so that makes it a sigma picarvesser ring. Um, and the, uh, the differential Dahl group uh, for, for this is, is acting on that too. Um, so it's, this gives you this inclusion, uh, but it turns out that if you take this risky closure, of, uh, of this group inside of the ambient GLN where they both live, uh, you, you get back the algebraic Gala group. So the, uh, so the algebraic Gala group is a close upper bound in a way to the differential group. Uh, and the differential group is essentially only defined by adding like actual differential equations. There are no more algebraic equations that somehow come up in that group. Uh, so the, uh, the few examples that I described before uh, also admit a structure of uh, a sigma delta field. Uh, in the case of the shift, uh, the usual PDX happens to be with, uh, with the sigma. Uh, also a chain rule. Um, in the Q dilation case, uh, if you take delta to be not DDX anymore, but XDX, that turns out to commute with, uh, with the action of sigma. And finally, in the case of the Mahler operator, uh, you still have to do something that first feels a little bit awkward, but if, it turns out that if you want to have a derivation on, on, on this field that commutes with sigma, uh, it, it needs to be this one. Um, but again, even though in some of the computations and the proofs, uh, these logs come up, there's usually some way to get rid of them and say things about uh, this rational functions again. Uh, now, these fields, uh, the sigma delta fields, their constants are the complex numbers, which is certainly not uh, differentially closed, the zero delta constant. Uh, but I'm just going to formally consider this, this k as sitting inside a bigger field where the constants are differentially closed, and, and just work over there for the proofs. So again, practice, you end up getting results about uh, just a complex numbers again. So here's the, the definition of a, a linear differential algebraic group. Uh, this way it's written somewhere. Uh, it's a subgroup of GLN that's defined by uh, a system of polynomial differential equations in the metric centers. Um, so here are some, some examples. Uh, any algebraic group over over the field uh, is also a differential algebraic group because algebraic equations are special silly cases of differential algebraic equations. Uh, slightly more interesting, if you have any algebraic group over the field of differential constants, that's also a linear differential algebraic group. And the system of equations is uh, first the equations defining whichever group you have. And then one more equation for each matrix entry saying that when you hit it with delta, you get zero. Okay. Uh, 
then the subgroups of the additive group, uh, if you remember uh, Michael uh, Wimmer's talk, uh, he was talking about different subgroups of, of the additive group, and they were all defined by uh, linear difference operators. That's a solution set to one of those things. Uh, it's uh, now it's a pretty classical. It's a classical result of the viscosity that um, the subgroups of, of GA in the differential case are also defined by linear differential operators in the one coordinate. Uh, in the case of GM, uh, you have something very similar. Uh, here's an example of, uh, uh, of a set of matrices in the, sorry, a set of elements in GM that's, uh, that's a subgroup and defined by differential equations. Uh, and any subgroup of, any differential subgroup of GM uh, is obtained as, as the solution set to an equation that looks like take the log of A and then apply a linear differential operator to that. Those are all the those are all the subgroups of GM. Yeah. Uh, the ones that, that will come up most often in our results. Uh, so uh, the results also show that if I give you a, a simple algebraic group, that linear, and uh, and then you have in there a differential algebraic subgroup that's very that dense. Uh, then G can only be essentially one of two things, either equal to the whole simple group that, that we had, or uh, the differential constant points of that group, after possibly uh, conjugating in the ambient GLM where they both go. Uh, I didn't write it, but uh, she, she also showed something more general about um, semi-simple uh, algebraic groups. So if I replace H with a semi-simple group instead, uh, and B is just a Zariski dance differential subgroup of that. H being semi-simple means that uh, I can write H as a product of simple groups, not direct, just a product inside some bigger thing. Um, and uh, any any D like this has to be, after conjugation, some of the factors in H are the full factors in H, but then some of the other ones are the differential constant points in those other factors. That's what all the semi simple uh, sorry, that's what all the differential algebraic subgroups, there is dense inside of a semi simple group. <coughs> um, so, uh, still have to define a few of the words in my, in my title. <coughs> if you're given a system like this, you're going to say that it's integrable if one of two equivalent things happen. Uh, happens. <coughs> the first, uh, to say it's integrable if, uh, if the differential dial group is actually one of these special differential groups uh, that only has differential constant points. Uh, and that turns out to be equivalent to uh, <coughs> the existence of a, of a matrix with coefficients in the ground field uh, satisfying this relation. Um, and and, 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 and on this, uh, the, the meaning of this relation uh, to that. So if, if this system is uh, not uh, integrable, uh, and, and Z is a fundamental solution. Uh, sorry, there, there exists a fundamental solution uh, for that equation such that uh, when you apply delta to this fundamental solution, uh, the action is derived by that matrix delta. Yeah. So, so if the system is integrable, that means that up to a choice, uh, <coughs> Your, your solutions also satisfy the system of differential equations. Um, are there any questions? Uh, the notion of projective integrability is, is similar. Uh, the, the Galo description is that uh, the system is projectively integrable if, if the group is, uh, is up, to, up to a scalar multiple, just constant matrix. Uh, sorry, so I should say it's, it's containing the element of the constants 
times the, the, uh, the, the diagonal matrices. Uh, and that's equivalent to uh, the existence of a B satisfying this uh, similar relation. And uh, I should say that the, the equivalence of, uh, of these two conditions, uh, uh, as, as far as I know, is first proved in the, in the, in the papers of uh, Thomas, uh, Charlotte, and, and Julian. Um, and I don't want to write down what it means uh, in the interest of time, but um, when this happens, you can show that uh, Z itself doesn't satisfy a system of differential equations. <coughs> but if you multiply Z by, by something, then that new matrix goes. And, uh, and the issue is what, what that something is. And uh, yeah, the, the, the element that you need satisfies properties that make it difficult to work with. I'll, I'll get into why that's important uh, in, in a bit. Uh, so let me write down what a result is. If you start, if your, if your equation is defined over the field of rational functions, uh, and sigma is any of the operators that I described before, the shift, equalization, or Mahler, uh, then if the system <coughs> is integrable, that forces both Galois groups to be abelian. Uh, and yeah, that, that's huge and unexpected. Mm -hmm. uh, if the system is only projectively integrable, then the groups don't, aren't necessarily abelian anymore. In some sense, they often are, uh, but they are guaranteed to be solvable. And, uh, and in fact, uh, in the shift case, they are still abelian for projectively integrable different situations as well. Um, so uh, these are the, the results that uh, allow us to, to show um, along the lines of uh, the proofs given by, by Thomas, Charlotte, and, and, and Julian um, that's, that, that those uh, generating functions from before are hypertranscendental. Uh, the, the technical Galateri tool is, uh, is this. So if you if what you know about the algebraic difference value group is that its connected component is reductive, that's what it means for, for that group to be large. Uh, then the differential value group uh, is forced to contain its, this whole big thing. So this is what it means for this one to be large. Uh, and in those applications, this, this knowledge uh, would, be, would be enough uh, to, to prove that, uh, and in practice, if you can somehow manage to show that some sequence that you care about uh, satisfies this difference power system, and then if you can also compute its difference power, you might discover this, and then that automatically forces uh, the solutions to be differentially present. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, the the, the DR is the derived subgroup, and it's uh, and it's, it's fancy speak for the commutator. The, it's the commutator of the of the commutator of the C, what is C? C is complex. Yeah. C is, mm -hmm. C is the No, oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. This is the complex numbers. But this one is the whole differential cost field. Um, of, the, of, the, of the delta x constants. Uh, no, the, no. the complex numbers are the constants. This is yeah. the differential cost field. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of flipping some things on the uh, rough. Sigma invariance. Yeah, so, so when, so when this group is, is reductive, but because the different system is defined over here, if I extend scalars to like some some other bigger field, the group is going to be the same. But you can assume that the C actually is the same C, can't you? No, 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 no. Not here. This is really saying that that, that the group is very large. Uh, this. That G a priori D could also be only the complex points of, of this group. But but I mean you can work in a context where C when okay, where C is the same thing up in the first line you actually have C viewed as a field rather than rather than as rather than as differential field. Uh, yes, when I when I when I'm only doing different color theory, I'm printing C as just a field. So so yeah, I could say the same C. 
yes. as a field. Right. This, this could be said for the same thing, but um, at, at least for now, you, you can probably get away with that, but um, this, this result is going to depend on the work of uh, Singer and Shevka, uh where the proofs really do go through analysis in a non trivial way. So I, so I do kind of want my system to really be over complex numbers at your next at first. And I, and I do also need to throw in the differential equals field to, to just make a statement. <laughs> Um, so the, the the result that, that, that we use to prove this is, is this. Uh, if you have one of the systems uh, that I was talking about before, so sigma in the shift, pure addition or mild shading, where the uh, where the matrix A has rational function uh, entries. Uh, if the system is integrable, uh, then it's gauge equivalent to uh, to a constant system. By constant, I mean that the, the matrix for the for the new equation uh, only has sigma invariant entries, uh, and uh, I'd like to give you an idea about the proof. How how much time do I? Well, okay, uh, that's for questions. Okay, okay. Uh, so so briefly. Um, uh, we can show that the Gal group of a uh, constant system is, is abelian, uh, and, uh, and the proof of that is quite cool, I wish I had time, but, but the idea is that um, certain facts about the different Gal theory uh, allow you to show that uh, the Gal group of a constant system like this one has to be contained in the Zorowski closure of the subgroup generated by B, and, and that one's abelian. Okay. Um, now, that's just for a constant system. The result of uh, Shevka and Singer says that if you only have an integrable system, it's, it's actually a constant system in disguise. Yeah. So the same is true for the Gal groups for, uh, for those. Um, if the system is only projectively integrable, uh, then there's an exact sequence like, like this. Uh, what this is doing formally is trying to derive by the end through something, and it can. So, uh, you do something else, but um, uh, so so if it's projectively integrable, you can trap the group that you care about uh, uh, between this abelian group because it's a subgroup of the di uh, diagonal matrices, and this x field that which is the Gal group for an integrable system over C of x that you can even write down explicitly. Uh, this one we just say is abelian, this one's abelian, and so h is subgroup. Uh, as I just said, uh, now the Gal group is uh, is uh, a Zariski dense subgroup of H, so it's going to inherit either of these properties when they hold. Uh, in particular, if if the connected component is is uh, semi-simple, um, then you know. So 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 let's just talk about the simple case. Uh, in the simple case, by the result of Cassidy, since the differential group is Zariski dense in there. The differential group can only be the differential constant points or the whole group. If it's differential constant uh, instead of the whole group, then the system is integrable. That was one of the characterizations. But if it were integrable, then the Gal group would be a billion. Yeah. Certainly not one of simple groups. Okay. Uh, so that argument, uh, you can carry it out with multiple factors of the same time. With you know, some work, but it's in there. Uh, and then if uh, the time to get to the result, if the connected component is uh, reductive, then the derived subgroup is, is semi-simple, and you can again kind of uh, show that this that this uh, semi-simple group uh, uh, has to be written. So I think I'll end there. Uh, thank you very much for it. Well, let's say it's one of the more complicated, like pure Mahler ones. Um, yeah. There, you have to show that it's that it's not over triangular, and it's also not one of these intermediate groups. Uh, so the conditions are 
whether or not you can solve certain Riccati equations that, that come out of the system. And if you can't solve them, that's going to mean that, uh, that the classical Gauss group contains a subgroup. And when, when n is equal to 2, that, that already forces uh, the differential group to contain the full SL2 as well. So you only have to show that uh, it's not upper triangular or, or intermediate. And that already forces hybrid on this result. Questions? Uh, uh, we'll thank the speaker again. There's going to be a photo opportunity. Uh, oh, okay.